Hello spooksters and welcome to Spirit and Law episode 2, Ghosts. Now this won't be the only episode we do on this because there is so much to cover and such little time and this is probably one of my favourite topics. So there is so much to talk about, but this is going to be more of a brief overall what they are, what they do, some of the best stories and my own personal experiences. As always, if you do like this, please do leave comments on this because it's going to be a YouTube video or if you want to contact our Twitter page, it is Spirit and Law. <laughs> so, ghost, apparition, haunt, spectre or spook or wraith. It can be the soul of a spirit of a dead person or animal or something even more diabolical. Now, the presence of ghosts can vary between shapes, sounds, aromas, things that make your the hairs stick up on the back of your neck, and this can be made by an, a deliberate attempt to contact a spirit or someone or something that has passed over. Now, for all, for all many years, there's always been... Um, fiction written about ghosts some might be fact some might be fiction but there's been a lot of um films and there's always been this morbid fascination with ghosts what they are and are they the the kind of gateway to the other the other side is there another side it, if if spirits are real that might be a huge indication that there is something and there is some sort of existence in the afterlife and what exactly is in the afterlife? Is it spirits of those that we loved once or animals that we once cared for? Or even from the birds you see outside to the fish that we eat? Are those all spirits? Do they have souls? There is so much to go over. But um, let's start with some good spirits and some bad spirits. Um, for instance, some spirits are believed to possess the bodies of those that are into cultish things and this can require exorcisms and there has been lots of films the exorcism most famous one about this happening to many people um being possessed by either spirits or something of a darker nature known as dark magic and also known as possession of a demon entity so it can vary. There is a difference between ghosts and spirits. Um, demons are more, well, evil. <laughs> Whereas ghosts are kind of seen as more of a someone passing through between this world and the next. And there's always kind of the idea of maybe a ghost having unfinished business or something they've left behind. Or perhaps they're stuck in this location or maybe there is an object around someone they once loved that is still there and they are, they are stuck in this world. Or maybe, maybe they could be visiting us. Maybe they could be a lover, um, a mother or someone related to us or a family member or even our little cat that we used to love. There is so much in this world that we don't know and the afterlife is one of the most fascinating subjects because there's been so many studies to try to see if they exist or not and I know there has been many science studies that goes to the idea that ghosts do not exist but then there's many experiences I've had personally and maybe some of you have had which may make you think or reconsider that. I mean in a sense if something in front of you flies across the room or you see a spirit of good old granny, you're going to question things and a lot of things cannot be put down to science. There is science and there is faith and there is afterlife, maybe. There's a lot of things in this world that are very unknown to us. So yeah. <laughs> With people, like an enthusiasm that I have, and many people do go out and they do a thing called ghost hunting. They will go to a place which is very, very haunted. And they will take their cameras and they will see exactly what they can find. Now, when they go out on these ghost hunts, they don't know what they're going to find. Be it bad, be it good. But it is an experience. And maybe a closure to an existence that might be there. Now, the idea of ghosts has not been a brand new idea. It's been around for a very long time. Some of the history of ghosts dates all the way back to the ancient and near eastern Egypt. Now there's lots of references to ghosts in uh, many many religions of Summer, Babylon and others like that. There are traces and beliefs that in a sense ghosts were thought to have 
being created at the time of death, taking on a certain memory and a personality of a dead person. And they travelled amongst the netherworlds, trying to find a position and an existence, or maybe they're trying to get to the other side. That's why a lot of times, sometimes, when... I've read a lot of articles about this. When a ghost passed over, um, they might, whilst they were alive, they might have had a certain fragrance. They had a perfume, a smell, vanilla or lavender, a, a certain thing that makes you think of them. And when a lot of uh, relatives would die, many um, members of the relatives, the relatives that did pass away, um, would mention this aroma that would suddenly happen in, in a room out of the blue. I mean, there has been many different... If you type in ghost experiences on Google, you would find thousands upon thousands. And it's interesting that it's it's been brought up through history, dating all the way back to the 5th century in the classical uh, Greek ghosts that had been haunting, frightening creatures, and they can work for either a good purpose or an evil purpose. And back in the classical Greek ghosts, or <laughs> Greek ghosts sound crazy. It sounds like they're just sitting around eating, eating grapes and cheese. I mean, I should say the belief in classical Greece was that the spirit of the dead was believed to hover near the resting place of the corpse and just places where they'd been buried or around things that that kept them on this earth, like relatives and so forth like that. And what the uh, ancient Greeks did is they held annual festivals to honour uh, um, placate the spirits to make sure they're happy to make sure they're still invited in and uh, it would keep them at bay keep them from doing things and so forth like that whereas the ancient romans believed a ghost could be used to exact and give a re revenge on any enemy by scratching a curse and on a piece of lead or pottery and placing it into a grave i mean there are so many different parts of history where in literature it has been mentioned here and there and so forth um even in egypt the akraf i think i'm saying it right it's um it's a bird and it's been seen whenever it's been done on um hieroglyphics it's uh it's known as the soul and the spirit reunited after death I just want to go into more history about this because it's so exciting to talk about. Now, heading on to the Middle Ages, uh, ghosts were reported in medieval Europe and they tended to fall into different categories. The souls of the dead, or the demons, the souls of the dead that return for a certain purpose, which is what I actually mentioned earlier, that they have some tie to this world. Maybe things were left unsaid. Maybe they were murdered. Maybe they ended their own life. They have something that keeps them here, perhaps. And then there was them demonic ghosts, which existed only to torment, revenge, or tempt the living into the death. Um, the living could tell them apart by demanding their purpose in the name of Jesus Christ. And the soul of a dead person uh, would divulge its mission, while a demonic ghost would be banished at the sound of the holy name. Also the sound of Gabriel, mentioning the name of Gabriel. Uh, the angel would also um, cause a certain sense of f fear in spirits that are not exactly the best. So there were some ideas that, um, I kind of believe in this in a sense, that uh, some ghosts were assigned to purgatory, and this is because they were condemned in a level... Um, or they need to atone for what they've done in life before they can get the holy, holy grail, get their next level. They are kind of in between. That's not to say once they pass into the holy grail, they can't come back. But before their, their spirit, once it leaves their body, and this is all me just reading a lot of um, things, and this is my own opinion coming into this, as I said. Um, as the spirit leaves the body, um, there is many things left undone. There is many kind of human emotions are things that aren't so positive e.g jealousy envy greed things left behind things unsaid it means i think purgatory is a sense where they can kind of clear all their sins clear everything and kind of become the better <laughs> but yeah um back to history <laughs> i want to talk about more history so in european renaissance to remember the Rheumatism. There you go. Um, <laughs> now, they believed a lot in the occult and also in necromancy, the idea of summoning the spirits from the dead and bring them back. There was also um, a Swiss. There was also a Swiss 
reformed pastor Land Ludwig Levater, who supplied one of the most frequently reprinted books of the period with his Of the Ghosts and Spirits Walking by Night. There was also a certain ballad called the Child Ballad Sweet William's Ghost, which recounts the story of a ghost returning to his fiancée, begging her to free him from his promise to marry her. He cannot marry her because he is dead, but her refusal would mean his damnation. So this reflects the popular belief that the dead haunted their lovers if they took up with a new love without some formal release. The Unquiet Grave expresses a belief even more widespread, found in various locations throughout Europe. Ghosts can stem from the excessive grief of the living, whose mourn interfaces with the dead's peaceful rest. And in many folk tales from around the world, the hero arranges for the burial of a dead man. Soon after, he gains a companion who aids him, and in the end, the hero's companion reveals that he is in fact the dead man. <laughs> so there are so many different concepts, so many different things. And even in Shakespearean literature, we have Hamlet. Hamlet and his father's ghost, which tells Hamlet, I was poisoned in the year. It was my brother. He was a bastard. Yes, I believe that's how Hamlet went. Exactly in that form. Uh-huh. <laughs> so if we want to take some scientific view about ghosts because i think we should add some science into this discussion um the physician john ferrier wrote an essay towards a theory of apparitions in 18 1813 in which he kind of argued that sightings of ghosts were just optical illusions and then we had french um physician exal i'm gonna say this so wrong alexandra jacques <laughs> Renisos Breria, and and that's his name. That's his name. He did he did and published um, the hallucinations or the rational history of apparitions, apparitions, dreams, ecstasy, magnesium, and in eighteen. 18- 43 this was released, and he claimed sightings of ghosts were just crazy people. <laughs> Um, so let's head down into a, a book in t- that was um, published in 2017. It was called uh, Investigating Ghosts, the Scientific Search for Spirits. And it writes, the ghost hunting is the world's most popular paranormal pursuit. Yet today, ghost hunters can't agree on what a ghost is or offer proof that they exist. It's all speculation and guesswork. He writes that it would be useful and important to distinguish between types of spirits and apparitions. Until then, it's merely a pile of game distracting amateur ghost hunters from the task at hand well that was a mouthful um so uh, in terms of science and so forth um yeah not not the best not the best in terms of trying to find some science behind all these deceptions illusions and what exactly ghosts are and if they even exist or they're just a figment of our imagination I mean, in terms of where we stand here, although, you know, as I said, there's a lot of things in this world which cannot be explained by just writings, books, journals and so forth, because we just don't know. And now I'm going to take a moment to um, tell you a story. I have quite a few ghost stories. Um, So this one was when I was a lot younger, I'd say I was around 12, um, I was having a sleepover at my friend's house, and because it was raining outside, we were going to have um, a tent outside, have a tent sleepover. Um, we bought the tent inside because it was a terrible storm outside, and um, I am terrible at sleeping in tents. I think it's because I grew up camping, and it's claustrophobic. Uh, so we were in one of these tents, and... Um, I I got up because I was getting that claustrophobic feeling. It was, I don't know what time it was. And I was trying to get up to go to the bathroom. I opened the tent door and there was someone sitting in front of me. And this girl. And because I was half asleep and half awake, I just kind of looked at her and I was like, I really need to pee. So I was just like, just, okay. Went to the toilet. I came back. I went to sleep. Uh, The next day, I was like, I had the weirdest, the weirdest dream. And um, my friend asked me, what what was the dream? And I was like, this really weird, I opened the tent last night and there was this girl and she had glasses and her hair was blonde to her shoulder length and so forth. And then the person responded, like she she went very, very pale. And um, she said that that was my sister. Um, She died when I was younger. And she, she showed me a photograph and it resembled her 
exactly now i don't know if i saw any other photographs in the house which would have been kind of my mind making that up so i'm gonna say that could have been very much a possibility but uh he's just freaky things like that when they happen and she watched d- didn't feel very harmful or anything just kind of just kind of sat there and just was watching not in an eerie way not in like a nightmare on elm street or anything like that um but yeah and since then i've had many other experiences with uh spiritual things things i can't explain knocks noises sounds apparitions so many of these have been experienced and i'm very spiritual myself so i do do a lot of tarot and i kind of have had experiences which has kind of opened me up to do more things and not exactly search i did search when i was younger when i was a lot more uh, grief stricken with things um but yeah it's, it's very weird and I kind of want to hear stories from you I want to hear ghost stories what what you have in mind what has happened to anyone else that has maybe experienced these these spirits and do you think a spirit's bad do you think a spirit's good do you think they exist or if they've ever existed or do you think it's all just imagination and our human conscious trying to grasp at the unknown and try to work out what the unknown could be and maybe have a sense of comfort because everyone does want to hear that oh okay um death is horrible but when we die we're not gone forever there's still a part of us there's still a part of kind of stays around there's still someone watching and still there so yeah um this ends today's podcast episode as i said there is going to be many more episodes about ghosts folklore conspiracies i'm just loving doing these podcasts right now and uh there was a little bit of a delay between each podcast but I'm back on track and i will keep you guys all updated thank you spooksters and i'll see you next time bye bye spirit